Hi, and welcome to State Hornet News. My name is Sarah Nevis, and I am the State Hornets Multimedia Editor. And I'm Ian Ratliff, the State Hornets Broadcast Editor. Here is the latest from the State Hornet Newsroom. With Thanksgiving last week, Americans gathered across the county and many traveled despite recommendations from health officials. COVID-19 infections have been on the rise and Sac State is not exempt from this rise. COVID-19 cases have risen to 31 cases linked to Sac State with 20 of those cases on campus. Two food service workers in one of the dining commons on campus tested positive for COVID-19, according to Samuel Jones, Interim Executive Director for University Housing Services, who sent an email to students living in the residence halls. The risk of transmission is deemed to be low due to safety protocols that are already in place. The survey was closed following this incident, but will be reopening on the 30th. ASI had an eventful week. To figure out what happened in the Sac State student government, I sat down with our deputy news editor, Cameron Dady, for this report. So my first question here is, over the last two weeks, we've gotten several bits of news. Could you briefly elaborate on what uh, has happened with ASI in recent weeks? Yeah, so during the board's meeting on November 25th, ASI Executive Vice President Donna Walters resigned effective immediately. This was the second resignation from the ASI Board of Directors this semester, as ASI's Natural Sciences and Mathematics Director Kyla Jenkins resigned during the board's meeting on November 19th to focus on working full time as she pauses her progress to a degree. Um, during the November 25th meeting, ASI also passed a resolution in favor of the university offering a credit, no credit option to students in the fall semester, although Provost Steve Perez said it may be too late in the semester for administration to implement. So the credit, no credit option, that's similar to what was offered in the spring, correct? Yes, it's going to be the exact same as it was offered in the spring where students can opt into it if they do choose to. With Walter's resignation, is it clear who will take over her responsibilities and does this leave ASI with a gap in their ability to meet the needs of students? As of right now, it's not clear as who's going to take over at Walter's position as executive vice president on the board. And did she give any additional reasoning uh, for her resignation? Yes, Walter said she was resigning to focus on a new opportunity that allowed her to help students in a larger capacity than her current role at ASI allowed. She said she'll be able to give more information about these upcoming projects in the future. Food deserts are a problem across the nation. Sacramento is no exception. Sac State students are trying to bring food to one of these deserts by starting a farmer's market called Sankofa Market. Greer the Storyteller and her partner Deborah Armstrong organized the initial market to bring together black entrepreneurs. Their focus was on bringing produce, which is often unavailable in their neighborhood, and to allow the people that live in the neighborhood to sell their goods. Armstrong said, quote, there's a lot of farmer's markets in Sacramento, but unfortunately, there's really low representation. You will go and you don't see a lot of black people there, or you don't feel as welcomed. You can find the Sankofa Market on the second Sunday of every month at Green Tech Farm in Sacramento from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Sacramento State blew out Bethesda University, 101 to 57, in the season opener for men's basketball. Head coach Brian Katz had this to say in a post-game interview. That, that was like uh, euphoric for our guys. I mean, um, look, a lot of teams, what they say, uh, already like 411 games canceled already. I told the guys you got 25 games this year, but do you really? I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I don't know. So. You got, we have to embrace and appreciate every single game and be so happy that we had the opportunity to play. The NCAA has implemented testing guidelines for COVID-19 that requires student athletes to be tested three times a week once the season has started. Bryce Fowler, senior forward for men's basketball, said that he and his teammates aren't fans of the testing, but it is out of their hands. Quote, we all came here to play basketball, and this is almost like a job for us, and we want to play and compete, Fowler said. Junior volleyball outside hitter Claudia Wilson said she thinks that being tested three times a week will significantly reduce the spread of COVID-19. The State Hornet has released the first in a new series called Stinger Sound Sessions. We are highlighting the bands that are part of the music community on campus. Here is a short taste of the series. Thank you. 
on this edition of State Hornet News. My name is Sarah Nevis. And I'm Ian Ratliff. The coverage continues on StateHornet.com and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe, stay healthy, stingers up, and we'll see you next time.